Good morning and you join me in a very chilly woodland this morning. I haven't come too far so I apologise if there's a bit of traffic noise and so on in the background. The main road is just through there. Um, I was asked yesterday by a guy that's interested in getting into hammock camping. He was a little concerned about the real basics about getting in and out without falling out the other side and things like that. So I thought I'd just give a couple of my tips of how I personally do it. It seems to work for me. Right, the first and most basic thing, getting in there. I'm not gonna go through the setup things today. I have done a video of that in the past. And if I can remember, I'll stick a link card up in the top corner of the screen there. But yeah, the getting in, I think that's what a lot of people worry about. They've seen the, you know, the comedy clips on the TV and whatever, people sitting in, falling straight out the other side and that sort of thing. With a few basic ideas, that's not gonna happen. Now, this is what I do. The thing to remember is ideally, you want your weight right in the middle of the hammock. So you've got material either side of you. If your weight's in the center, you're less likely to come out. If your weight's on the edge, either edge, that's potentially when the problems can start. So, all I would do is I would grab a handful here. So the, the middle of the hammock is probably sort of just behind my hands and I've got a good amount of material behind me. Handful, stretch out the other side sit in the middle. Simple as that really. You can then move the slack behind your knees. You're in. It, it's quite simple really. Once you've done it a few times and got confidence in doing it, you'll think, well, what was the fuss about? But that's how I do just the basic sitting in. You can, of course, adjust yourself if you get a bit more slack behind you, less this side. You can effect effectively make a backrest if you want a, a swinging recliner. But this will all come with practice. Sometimes it's a good idea just to come out on mornings like this, set it up and just have a go. Just play around with things. What works for you? Won't necessarily work for everybody, but what works for you, your size, your hammock, they're all slightly different. So uh, get out there, and have a play with the system you've got before you actually get as far as doing a night would be my advice. You can iron out all the bugs and if it all goes wrong, well, you can just go home. <laughs> but if you're already out there planning to do a night, well, then it becomes more complicated. The other thing, getting in with a sleeping bag, that brings a whole new range of problems. Now your sleeping bag. This one has got the center zip, which does make life easier. But you can use any sleeping bag. The problem that a lot of people find is if they've got the sleeping bag laid out in the hammock, when you sit in it, obviously everything moves about the foot end slides down, the head end slides down, you get in, it's rucked up underneath you, you're wiggling around all over the place trying to get the bag from under you, and that's when you could potentially fall out because you do have to do an awful lot of wiggling. There is a very simple way to get over this, and it will work with any sleeping bag. As I say, centre zips are easier because you've just got the equal amount to pull up around you. Zip's nice and easy access. A conventional sleeping bag, of course the zip's right at the side. You'll get in and sometimes the zip ends up underneath you and all that sort of silly behavior. It's very difficult to get down the side and pull the zip up. But let me show you how to get around that. Right, let's get the boots off. I 
don't know if you can see from that angle I've got a little ground sheet on the floor just so I'm not standing in the dirt doesn't need to be anything fancy any old tarp builders tarp anything you like as long as you're on the floor now obviously normally I'll be taking my jacket off at this point but it's really cold so it's staying on so it's gonna be a bit bulky but open up the sleeping bag step in of course I'm on the ground sheet sleeping bags not getting dirty now this only really works if you're using a sleeping bag with a hood most of mine do this is how I do it find your hood stick it on Do your zip up a good amount so you're, you're wearing it this is of course side zip not a problem to do it when you're upright like this the material is fairly straight it's easy to zip so zip it up but not too far you need to have your arms out gather your hammock like before sit in Once you've sat in and you're roughly in the middle, grab your sides, transfer. I'm in the hammock, the bag's just about flat underneath me, the hood's in the right place, the footbox is in the right place. At this point, the only thing that I would do is I normally have my pillow on the floor here next to me. At this point, I'd grab the pillow, stuff it in the hood so it stays where I want it. Not everyone has a pillow in a hammock. It's not always needed, depending on the shape of your hang. Sometimes I use one, sometimes I don't. And when I do use one, it's only a thin one. I only find I need a little bit. If I have a full-size pillow, it's a bit too high in a hammock. But that's the easy way of getting into your bag. Do it on the outside, then just sit in, swing your legs in. It saves all this moving about and trying to pull it up under you and, and all that silly behaviour. Let's face it, we do this to enjoy ourselves and relax. The simpler you can keep things, the more fun you're going to have. Of course, getting out is just the complete opposite, just the reverse. Grab your sides, swing your legs over the side, your sleeping bag's still on the ground sheet. You can just stand up, unzip, and step out. Nothing like keeping it simple. Right, the only other thing that I'll show you today is how I've done my straps and the carabiners. Sometimes if you've got heavy rain, it doesn't matter how much coverage you get with the tarp, the straps can still get wet. Water running down the tree, eventually it will run down the straps. And of course, if you're not careful, that water continues down the strap into the hammock, then into your sleeping bag not nice so two things the end of my strap I haven't obviously carabinered right on the end so there's some slack I've run it round just tuck the end through one of the loops so if the straps get very very wet in an ideal world it will drip off the lowest point anything that that doesn't deal with the carabiners, of course, being metal, don't absorb water. I've got a twin set up on here. And the reason for that, I find that a vertical carabiner will obviously drip better than a flat one. That's why there's two on there. The ones going through the loops, obviously, they, they naturally want to go flat. 
by having the two, I've got a flat one, then a vertical one. So if that doesn't sort it, that should. Never been wet yet using that sort of system. There'll always be a first, but hey, that's part of fun. Right, let's get this stuff packed up. And I'm back off home for a bacon sandwich. Anything else that people want to know that I can help with, just drop something in the comments. If there's a particular thing you're unsure about, if I can help, I will. That's why I'm here. I'll see you on the next video, guys.